We are now joined by Rob Kaufman, co-owner of Michael Waltrip Racing. Rob, we also appreciate you coming in and taking some time with the media and answering some questions this morning. No problem. Well, good morning, everybody. I think just wanted to uh, elaborate to the extent people wanted on uh, the news and uh, what the background is. Um, as people saw, we uh, agreed to uh, uh, part ways with uh, Clint Boyer and let him uh, go on his uh, merry way uh, career-wise. Uh, unfortunately, MWR will be uh, more or less ceasing uh, operations for the most part in uh, 2016 and beyond. Um, as people saw previously, I uh, have agreed to purchase an interest in uh, Chip Ganassi Racing, so uh, continue to be involved in the sport uh, going forward. And uh, we're just kind of at this stage kind of processing all that stuff internally. So uh, happy to answer any kind of questions I can do or, uh, or clarify. Thanks for folks. Okay, we have a few minutes to take some final questions. We'll go ahead and start over here. I think uh, Mark, did he have the first one? Then we'll go to Jim and Bob. Uh, Mark Garrow with uh, PRN. Rob. You're, you're, you, you obviously oh, yeah, were, yeah. you know, invested, uh, invested in Michael Walter Racing, and, and, and Michael said yesterday that whatever the team experienced after 2007 would not have been possible without you. Um, so I guess a lot of folks wondering why you didn't choose to stay with that organization and then jump over to the next one. What do you tell them? Well, Mike and I are, uh, you know, business partners and, and, and good personal friends. Uh, I think what's probably missing there is the uh, uh, the financial side of the picture. Uh, Michael Walter Bracing really wouldn't have existed through to today without substantial and continued financial support from me. Um, I think that uh, just from a business standpoint, that didn't make sense any longer. Uh, you, know, you can't have a top 10 budget and top 10 resources and not be in the top 10 for a, a sustained period of time. So uh, it's just kind of it's a performance-related business. I mean, it's all about performance. It's a it's a great sport, but a very difficult business model. And from a business decision, it just made sense to uh, to to not go forward with uh, without organization. It just isn't really commercially viable. Uh, and then on a completely separate note, I think I'm you know voting with my uh, uh, wallet as well as heart and uh, investing uh, uh, continue to invest in the sport by uh, uh, Chip Ganassi Racing. Okay, we'll take our next question up front from Jim. Jim Mutter, Charlotte Observer. Uh, Rob, with your new, whatever your new role with Chip Ganassi turns out to be, and, and, and recently you've been known very well as, as the leader of the, of the RTA. Do you foresee that your role in that organization will continue or in, in the same fashion as it has recently? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, the Race Team Alliance has been a, a great uh, uh, development over the past year or so. Uh, we've gone from kind of nowhere to, uh, to a real uh, counterparty, I think, for people and uh, uh, we've been able to make some real good progress, I think, on a variety of levels around the sport. And I think uh, it's, you know, an honor and a privilege to be a chairman of that organization. All my uh, fellow uh, teams have uh, asked me to serve on that and I'm happy to do so and will continue to do so and maybe even have a little more time to, uh, to focus on it, so. Okay, we'll take our next one from Bob, then go to Dustin. Bob Pockers, ESPN, the same question I asked Clint. Uh, how much do you uh, view this as kind of from coming, stemming from what happened in Richmond in 2013? Well, certainly that was a uh, pretty heavy body blow to the organization, caused a big restructuring. Um, you know, 2014 was at some level a large uh, reset year, uh, certainly competitively and also financially. Uh, I think as we got into you know, the sp late spring, you know, April, May 2015, you know, really from a performance standpoint, the company wasn't where it needed to be. Uh, and that kind of forced some, uh, some decisions and thought process over the summer, and that's kind of where we've uh, wound up today. So, uh, so I think uh, at the end of the day, it's a competitive business, and that's where we are. I don't think uh, my, my crystal ball, unfortunately, is not clear. So uh, in a parallel universe, I'm not sure what would have happened. So. Okay, we'll take our final question, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. A couple things, uh, Rob. When do you, one? When do you anticipate everything being finalized with the Ganassi agreement, uh, having that all done? And what what when you have now more time to do with the RTA? What does that allow you to do that that you couldn't have done, or or is a little bit more challenging because you were more involved with this organization? What will it more allow you to do? 
Well, certainly in the past year or so, I've been pretty involved with the day-to-day -day operations of uh, Michael Waltrip Racing, and I think now I'll be able to step back from that. I'm probably not the best people, person to run a race team day in and day out. Um, I think one of the attractions of partnering with, uh, with Chip is really he runs his business himself. He's a racer. Uh, he's had a race, I think, almost every single weekend. Uh, so that will, you know, free up some of my time to do a variety of different things. As people know, I'm involved in, you know, vintage car racing and other business ventures and the like. And uh, the RTA is one of several things, um, and that's, you know, progressing well. And I think that'll move pretty quickly over the course of the next uh, three to six months. So look forward to some developments there as well. Rob, you won't have you won't have day-to-day -day duties. Will you will you pull further away from the sport? Or are you still going to be as involved? Or as visible. No, I think I think it's a great sport. It's just a really you know, difficult business model, which uh, I'm trying to work to help uh, fix, or uh, or at least uh, make some progress in that regard. But uh, I think I'll I'll pull away from trying to figure out what's going on in the aero department, and more maybe what's going on overall with the structure of the business. Will that change for next year? Will the structure change for next year? The the, the business model. You you say you're working on it. Is it? You feel like there's going to be something in place for next year for for teams that give them a little bit more uh, viability or give them a little bit more, you know, to, to avoid something yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite optimistic. I think on the uh, discussions with uh, the folks at NASCAR regarding uh, a variety of things around the sport, the competition side, the uh, the long-term equity program, are all uh, initiatives uh, well underway, and people are working quite hard on those. So I'm pretty optimistic we'll make some good progress in the next number of months. Rob, thank you very much for your time this morning. We appreciate you. you coming in.